Hello, and welcome back to the Building with AppSheet series, where I discuss building apps with AppSheet and Google technologies. I'm Christian Schalk, a Google developer advocate, and in this episode, I'll discuss how to prepare your Google Sheet for use with AppSheet. Let's get started. In this episode, we'll cover the following. How to name your sheet columns so they work best with AppSheet. How to use AppSheet keys to enable AppSheet to automatically ensure unique rows and how you can structure your data in a relational format with multiple tabs so that AppSheet can automatically generate a relational app. I'll also touch on some basic Sheets tips and tricks on how to easily clean and format your Sheets data for best results when bringing into AppSheet. One of the most important things to consider when prepping a sheet for AppSheet is column names. You can actually help AppSheet a lot by providing helpful column names that provide guidance to AppSheet when it generates an app. Column names should be short and descriptive with no special characters such as spaces, exclamations, hash symbols, etc. You'll also want to avoid numeric or repeated column names. For each column of data in a sheet, AppSheet assigns a specific underlying data type such as date, address, email, and so on. You can directly influence how AppSheet assigns data types by using column names that imply a specific type of data. For example, Using a column named date or due date will automatically generate an underlying date data type in AppSheet. Other literal column names will also work, such as address for an address, photo for an image, and so on. In general, column names serve as helpful hints for AppSheet to assign the appropriate data types when generating apps. A key difference between Sheets and AppSheets is that Sheets don't require each row or record to be unique, whereas AppSheet is an application development environment, so its data must have unique record identifiers. To accomplish this, AppSheet uses keys to identify each record in the sheet. AppSheet defines keys automatically when an app is generated and automatically designates which column or columns to serve as a key. For example, task combined with description could be used as a key. You can also specify which column you wish to use as a key in AppSheet. Similar to column names, you can also provide hints to AppSheet for key generation. For example, having a column named ID along with unique data in that column will tell AppSheet to use that column as a key. AppSheet will also ensure that value for this column remains unique by automatically providing a unique ID function as a default initial value for that column when records are created. You can also set the unique ID manually in AppSheet. Before switching to the demo, here's a few tips and tricks in Google Sheets that you can also use to best prepare your sheet for AppSheet. First off, the Explore feature in Sheets can auto-analyze your data with AI to help refine your data and remove duplicates and inconsistencies. You can also use Sheets functions such as Query, Unique, and Import Range for further data cleanup. It's also important to note that you would only use these functions temporarily. Once data is queried from a function, you would copy and then paste just the output values into a new column and then remove the functions before moving to AppSheet. Also, using the built-in Sheets tools such as data validation, conditional formatting, cleanup suggestions, and remove duplicates are also very helpful for data cleanup before bringing to AppSheet. So for the demo, I'll start with a familiar looking example sheet with tasks, projects, and managers data. However, one of the problems will be that the data is all crammed together on a single sheet with poorly named columns and inconsistent data. I'll then update the sheet to prepare it for AppSheet. Once the data is prepared and separated into related tabs and column names are improved and such, it will resemble a traditional relational database, which is where AppSheet can then take over and easily generate an app from. Let's jump to the demo. Okay, so switching to the demo, what we're looking at here is an extreme example of a very poorly formatted Google Sheet, which will not work well at all with AppSheet. So for example, here we can see that we have poorly named column headers. Uh, we also have like invalid characters and such. There's also inconsistent uh, data in some of the columns here that I've highlighted in red. Um, and also you'll notice that the um, records here, there's repeated values in the different records. And so this is actually a sign that the data is not really set up correctly. We should actually have all the data broken out into distinct different tables. And so that's what we'll do to clean this up moving forward. Another thing I want to show you is that there is a um, column here that has formulas that generates an email address. And this is actually using a lookup from a table over here on the right side here. So that's another thing that we'll clean up. And then finally, as you can see, this is a very poorly named tab, uh, which doesn't actually work well with AppSheet as it creates a table named off of that. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, switch to a cleaned up view of this table here or this sheet. And as you can see, 
I've cleaned up the column names. I've removed inconsistencies. I've uh, also added validation uh, so that only those specific values can be added into those columns there. And this is actually a hint for AppSheet to, to uh, keep track of this. And most importantly though, is I've broken out the data into three distinct tables or tabs. And the way that these tabs or tables work is that um, there is a project or a column here with a name of a reference table. So in this case, for the tasks table, there's a project column here that's named project that refers to the projects table. And likewise, there's a manager column that refers to the manager table. So this is, these are all hints to AppSheet in order to generate an underlying uh, relational data model. Okay, so let's go ahead and generate an app now that we've cleaned up our data. So create an app. And so while that's working, I'm going to go ahead and give you a sneak preview of the app that we're going to be building. So this app essentially has the tasks, projects, and the managers, as well as like a budget chart and, and a map chart as well. And so for the tasks or any one of these forms, anytime you enter any data, you can see that it's validated input. So you can select different buttons, the date picker and uh, drop downs and, and, and so forth. All right. So this is the app that we're going to be building. So let's go ahead and switch over to our generated app. So there we are. We have like a quick preview of the app in that window. And of course, here's the um, app over on the right. So first off, you'll notice that um, we only have a single table for tasks. And so I'm going to go ahead and add tables for projects and managers. And here's the one for managers. All right. So let's take a look at one of these tables here and we'll look at the columns. And so as I mentioned, because we selected good column names, it actually selected the appropriate underlying data type. And also because we've selected distinct or we've added validation to the sheet, um, it has set it up as a enum data type and provided those distinct values as values to enter into this particular application. And the same holds true for the priority column as well. right? Um, we can also notice that the project column is of type ref. That means that it's a reference to the projects table. So that's how it sets up the linkage between the different tables. So as you can see here, this uh, projects table has a uh, manager column of type ref. It also has a uh, related tasks of type list. So it's actually looking back for the different relations here. So at this point, we have a fully relational data model that we're good to go with. The only updates I'm going to do now is just uh, update the UI a little bit. So for, for UX, I'm going to go ahead and update this statistics uh, thing here and make it uh, a menu item. So instead of it appearing on this uh, bar on the bottom, it will only be accessible via the menu on the top left there. And then for the map, I'll just push that over to rightmost. So now the map icon is on the bottom right. And then for tasks, I'm going to switch that to a table, which is like the nice uh, compact format that we want. And I'll make that leftmost. So now the task is definitely going to stay on the left side. All right. So now let's go ahead and create um, two new views for projects and managers. So I'll click new view. I'll set projects as the name or the data source. And then we'll go ahead and um, let's see if I want to keep that as yeah, I'll keep that as a deck. And for this one, I'm going to change the display icon. To that icon right there. So now we can distinguish it from the other tasks uh, icon. And then now let's go ahead and create a new view for the managers. And for this one, the deck is actually preferred here because we have the images as well, uh, as opposed to like a table uh, view type. All right. And then again, for this one, I'm going to update the display icon. have a nice group looking like icon. And that's it for that one. So the only thing we're going to do as well is create a budget chart. And I happen to know that there is a, a budget column in this projects table. So I set the view type as chart. And I set the uh, chart type as pie chart. And I select 
a column here, which is the budget column in that chart, in that table that is, and then I'll select the display as the pie icon, because everyone likes pie, and that's it. So our app is essentially complete. Um, so as you can see, we have tasks, projects, managers. We have a uh, budget there showing the different budget values. And we also have our map there. And more importantly, we have built-in validation. So if I want to enter in any data, I could select from the only those distinct values. I have a date picker as well as a priority that has all the specific uh, enumerated values. So as you can see, in just a matter of minutes, I was able to take a cleaned up sheet and generate an app and with minimal updates, uh, make it fully functional. This concludes the Sheets and App Sheet episode. Stay tuned for more coverage of this important topic in future episodes. And for more info on AppSheet and Google Workspace, check out the links in the description below. And for more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to this series so you don't miss out. As always, thanks for watching.